Hey guys, Luna here. Welcome to another episode of Dot Crypto Hustle. Today on the show, Kurt Braggett, founder of White Rabbit, which is an ICO, ICO news listing website. Hey, Kurt, how's it going? Hey, how are you guys doing? I'm happy to chat again. Yay. Super excited to have you here. So wanted to talk about top three crypto trading exchanges out there, what your recommendation is. So I guess to start, which one is your absolute favorite? So I would say that right now Binance is definitely my favorite and it's not just because I find them to be reliable and more secure like than other exchanges, but I really believe in their mission and I think that it's a really notable project in the crypto space that has a lot of really great features that I feel like they're really trend setting like with their token and their mission and their success trajectory and how they're kind of bending the rules in some ways so I really love them a lot. But for like a newbie starting out I guess like I mean or someone who's dabbled with Binance do you think that some of the features could potentially be enhanced. I can speak to that. I think that, um, you know, the, the reality is, is that exchanges are really derivative from products that aren't really meant for end users like newbies and people that aren't in financial markets. So I think that what you're speaking to is actually a, a huge problem. And I think that the exchange of the future that works in the cryptocurrency markets need to be more friendly because Really what I think is going to happen, and this is a little bit controversial maybe, is that like a 10-year-old might want to hop onto Binance and sell their their magic swords or something, you know. And, and so, you know, Binance is going to maybe have to learn how to grow into these kind of markets because when you look at it, it looks like fucking Chinese and it has all these graphs and all of the shit everywhere that you don't really care about often. You have a, a pretty specific goal, like you want to buy something, you want to sell something. And so that's why, you know, and I know that we want to talk about Coinbase. So I think that Coinbase is really kind of architected and built a platform up from the idea that there are there is this emerging market rather than like a traditional financial institution type of thinking that finance has. Yeah, and that's why Coinbase had such a powerful trajectory this last year because it's idiot proof, if you will. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think so. And so maybe we can transition into to Coinbase. Uh, I, I'm happy to talk about Binance more. I think that they're amazing. Like I know that they just hit one milestone, which was yesterday, July 10th, which was uh, 2017, July 10th was the day that they closed their ICO, which was $15 million. Wow. And now they've been valued at $1.5 five billion dollars today so that was a huge milestone that's um, amazing yeah and another note on Binance is they will be releasing a DEX a decentralized exchange and they are very dedicated to helping you know you know drive these markets and so that's why I really love their mission and supporting but, uh, it, and supporting the mission of cryptocurrency which is decentralization essentially I think so. And I mean, yeah, they probably love money and they're not allergic to money, I'm sure. But, you know, they they probably, you know, I, I feel uh, very confident that the founders and the founding team, it's been a long story for them. Uh, it's been 20 years that they've been in the financial markets, actually. A lot of people think it's just like an overnight success, but they've grinded pretty hard. And I think that they have a great mobile app, for example. Um, and I think that a lot of the other exchanges don't have that. So using their mobile app, I think is pretty good. I don't know if it's available in the U.S. store, but you can download it from their site. Um, and I find it to be, you know, it looks pretty decent and I find the trades to be reliable. And I think that actually people are storing their tokens there and feeling secure. And I'm not giving you investment advice, but some people feel pretty confident that they can leave their tokens. And that's unheard of to me to leave your tokens on exchange. And I'm not suggesting that. Don't keep your tokens in an exchange, actually. But I know a lot of people are starting to feel comfortable with that, feeling like they're in the cloud when they're on the exchange. And that's something really new for crypto from my point of view. No, you're absolutely right. So if somebody is interested in uh, transitioning to, to Binance, what's the best advice you could give them as far as like getting to know 
the uh, the platform and and feeling more comfortable inside of the of Binance. Yeah, so I I would always go in with a simple goal because you can be kind of overwhelmed. I I they have a pretty good support section, and often if you want to do some kind of trade, like let's say you want to go from BTC to something else. Uh, often what you want to do has been done by a lot of other people. So Google it and read their help section. Uh, don't forget to turn on 2FA, which is like helps to secure your account, basically that nobody else can log into it, steal your money. Um, they'll send you a little code to your phone or something or use And Google. 2FA is two-step authorization. <laughs> yeah, two-factor authentication. Two factor, yeah, there you go. Yeah, three, yeah, so yeah, that's my suggestion there. Cool. All right. So let's talk about Coinbase, which is another giant. What's yeah. uh, what's your overall take with Coinbase? I think that they're one of America's greatest companies, honestly. And I know it's really early to say that, but I'm extremely proud of what they've done. From a user point of view, I would say it's great and I would suggest using it. Um, I remember back in 2012 when I first heard of it. I used it and it was kind of built in this shitty bootstrap kind of site and it looked a little bit budget. So I'm really proud of where they've come. And at one point in time, I believe they were, they were adding about 100,000 users per week, which is pretty insane considering all these people are gonna be trading this crazy anarchy money on there. And um, I, I'm really excited about their future. I, I actually suggest Coinbase before I would suggest something like Binance. And the, and, and the history kind of tells the story is that when Coinbase started their business, they thought that it was a wallet. They didn't realize that they were an exchange, but then they looked at the math and they're like, oh shit, exchanges make way more money and that's kind of what we want to do. And so once they learned that, they you know, kind of established themselves as a, as a more of an exchange. But it's really great because they had like a wallet centric way of thinking about it. So it was like friendly way to store and move around your Bitcoin. And so I think that that's why I prefer this solution for, for noobs to go in and anybody who's just trying to get into it, create your Coinbase account, have one of your friends send you some Bitcoin. If uh, you know you really want to, you can hit me up and I'll send you some Bitcoin. If it's your first time ever setting up an account, I'd be happy to do that. But it's just really friendly and they're gonna be onboarding more and more tokens. So I think that it's a good one to have as a baseline. Yeah, I guess my only beef with Coinbase is that it doesn't have a lot of the altcoins, like the shadier altcoins, the rebel yeah. altcoins. Yeah, I, I have a few beefs with it. So one of mine is that it just feels like I'm entering like the, you know, the IRS building or something. Ah, that is you know, true. They're, they're, so, they're so big on like, like I, I, when I've been referring friends, actually I did it yesterday i referred a friend to it and he couldn't even barely get in it's like what's the nearest street to your house and like i don't know if that's going to be a winning strategy for them because they have to do all this kyc bs but um well yeah there's a lot of and being a company around in the u.s they probably have to uh be compliant yeah they're just they're they're too big you know so they gotta play nice with governments and stuff so I think that that is one of the reasons why I think it's not as friendly as it was before. Before you could get up and running pretty quick. So, but just be patient. I think it's safe. Um, you never really hear a lot about Coinbase getting hacked. You know, as far as I know, I don't even know if they have been hacked. I don't think that they no, have. No, they haven't. And so part of that is because they've been in the space for a long time. Like Binance is a year old now from their ICO, and Coinbase has been on the scene since I think 2011. So they're tried and true. And they have a lot of great technologists and really visionary people. So I, I trust them. I'd suggest them as one of my top wallets or exchanges. What about the rumors that it might potentially get bought by Facebook? Do you think that's true? I wouldn't <laughs> doubt it. I think really? Facebook is smart as fuck if they do it. I mean, honestly, like I would be, if I was Mark Zuckerberg, I'd be calling up the CEO of Coinbase every day. Because those guys are getting bored over at Facebook. They've been building that shit for a long time. And um, it's just funny because we like to like, we like to talk about these big companies like Google and Facebook having to start these little cryptocurrency uh, initiatives within their business just to retain employees. 
because all these employees are like, why don't I just go work for this crypto company over here? And I've been riding this search engine for 15 years. <laughs> I'm tired of this shit, you know? So um, I wouldn't doubt it. You know, I think that Facebook, obviously, they have an internal blockchain team. They're developing out their blockchain technology. They've already done payments. They have David Marcus, who is from PayPal. They have all of the fingerprint that you need. All of the proof is laid out that says, hell yeah, they're going to start acquiring companies. And that's what they do. They buy them up, whatever they want to get into. They don't want to hand roll it themselves. They want to buy something that's already working. So I think it's smart. Yeah, if Coinbase says yes, because it's probably in their best interest to continue their trajectory. I don't know. Yeah, I think that it's going to be yes, and you're going to have to pay a lot of money. You know, like I think that you know, look at GitHub at seven billion, but yeah. you know, it's not a bank. Coinbase is like a bank and an exchange. There is a lot of potential there. Like this could be a, a very massive acquisition, actually, very massive. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. So, what's yeah, your? Yeah. yeah, no, it's cool. So, what's your third recommendation as far as crypto exchanges? This is a good question. You know, like I'm actually going to go off of our script a little bit because I. I actually like these decent, these kind of like shady back alley exchanges. I really do. And I just have to be honest. And I know that we kind of had a plan going into this. <laughs> but I really like, I've used Ether Delta a lot. You know, if a uh. new point, like I'm all about trying, to me, exchanges mean access to tokens and access to buy. Mm. And I want to find opportunities. And so a lot of these decentralized exchanges, like I even like Cryptopia and like Cryptopia is like the 99 cent store of like ICOs, but I like Ether Delta and I like Cryptopia. I find a lot of random shit and you can get returns and you can really play around. That's where I go if I'm kind of bored and I want it like I bought a uh, Pickle Ricks and they 10 X after I bought them and it's not investment advice. This is a shit coin. It's a meme coin. But <laughs> You can gain access to a lot of these weird tokens on on some of the shadier back alley exchanges. So I suggest those to, to people. <laughs> no, but that's actually a really relevant point. I mean, obviously, you have to not be risk averse and look at it as a video game. But you're absolutely yeah. right. And so are those because actually I've never I've never heard of these. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm just trying changer. to throw out some. some yeah, fresh please do. Yeah. That's that's the kind of info we want to put out there. Are they easy to, is it easy to use? Or I mean, is there tutorials on YouTube about uh, using, for instance, like Ether Delta? Um, yeah, there are a lot of uh, tutorials. Um, and, you know, just always use caution. I think that they're, they're not as easy to use as Coinbase or Binance, but they have a, you know, a lot of similarities, a lot of exchanges like Binance, Cryptopia, KuCoin, you know, all these different exchanges, they're really the same shit. You know, they're trading pairs and you can buy and sell. You can see pressure and you can see, you know, ball. they really have like all the same stuff. Um, I would say out of like the more complex ones, finance is probably the easier one. But if you just want to do some simple stuff and just want to get in the game, use Coinbase. If you're looking to make some shadier, riskier buys or find stuff earlier on the market, the great thing about Ether Delta is that a token that's on ERC-20 that might not have made it onto the bigger exchanges yet will be on one of those uh, decentralized exchanges because anybody can throw the asset up there. That's so, true. So yeah. one of my personal favorite is KuCoin and simply uh -huh. because there's a lot of different altcoins that you won't find on Coinbase or Binance. It's pretty easy to use for a newbie like myself. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I just really like the UI and also, like I said, it also has a lot of different altcoins that are not potentially on Coinbase. So that's what I like that, uh, particular exchange. What about, uh, let's see, we didn't talk about Robinhood. What about Robinhood? I haven't really used it to be honest. So Robinhood is actually, it, it really was a pretty cutting edge app for, um, buying and selling stocks on uh, the stock exchange, the traditional stock exchange. And one of the things that they did was, um, and it kind of is in sync with their name Robinhood, is that they had zero fees for buying and, and trading. And so 
um, one thing that they did recently, you know, seeing the emerging crypto market is they started um, announcing the support for crypto. So right now you can buy Bitcoin, but they've also had some of the top, uh, they're starting to support prices for um, other top tokens. Like I was really excited about Stellar because I really love that. Um, so right now you can buy Bitcoin, you can buy and sell Bitcoin, which is really great because I think that, you know, it's a tr kind of more on the traditional financial side and it's probably very safe, I would say. Um, it's a fun app to use and I think that Robinhood is a great brand and great design. It's mobile, it's really friendly. Probably one of the more friendly ways that you can actually buy Bitcoin. Um, it, I found it a little bit easier to get into than Coinbase is now. Um, and they're starting to support altcoins that Coinbase might not. And I think it's a pretty aggressive move, but I think it's smart on their part. I think eventually what they're going to have is more tokens than Coinbase, and they're becoming a contender there. Love their design. They have this whole, like, crypto never sleeps, like, Tron vibe. Oh, that yes. I really you know, so they did a yeah. really good job with the marketing launch and uh, and building anticipation. I when was this actually? Was it in was it in it's January almost, or was it in February? I just don't remember. Yeah. But here's the thing. You know what I figured out is they actually didn't do a good job with their marketing. And no, like, let's, I felt like they so, did. Why? Well, OK, so this is so now. I the the way I agree with you is that their marketing materials to me it was a fucking home run. Yeah. Like I have watched and I've never watched a financial video about a financial product more than half of the first time. I'm just like I'm a few seconds in I'm like what the fuck is this? I don't want to watch it. <laughs> but this Robin Hood commercial, it was like life changing. Their their commercials that they have, they're so well done. They're so tuned to the right target demographic and everything. But so what I heard was that they pulled them down because they weren't performing well. And they were like embarrassed about it. And I don't know why. I actually messaged one of the guys that I know at Robin Hood to like ask him and he didn't respond. But like their materials are so amazing. They look so amazing. And I feel like they must have converted more. But like, for example, their YouTube video that I was talking about. I think it didn't even do more than 100,000 views, which is like kind of pathetic if you're a massive company like that and you're in the crypto space, like a uh, HODL gang got more views than that. You know what I mean? And that just doesn't feel right, but maybe it is right. I don't know. But I, I, what I heard and the word on the street was that the shit wasn't performing very well and they had to pull it down. So Interesting. Maybe because... And I would hate to, to, I mean, to say this out loud, but like maybe because the crowd is more like crypto, crypto bros who want uh, their know, Lambo and their. I feel like that was for crypto bros. It was so cool. Like these, these YouTube commercials, I feel like we should link to it. Like, yeah, and, and you can it. find it, but now it's like a Radiohead video where like maybe somebody filmed their screen and then reposted it now because the original is down. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, now I'm really, I'm going to look for it. I'll include the link for sure. Uh, Yay. Awesome. Well, Kurt, always great chatting with you. Where can we find you on social media? You can find me on Twitter at Kurtybot. You can see our site, whiterabbitICOs.com. And you can find us also on YouTube, White Rabbit ICO Discovery. And I'll make sure to include all the links in the description. All right, guys. Well, make sure to subscribe to That Crypto Hustle. And also check out all of our cool merch on thatcryptohustle.com. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.